Approach encephalopathy. A 75-year-old woman with a history of hypertension and osteoarthritis was brought to the emergency room by her son. She has been confused over the past three days. How do you proceed? Encephalopathy is a clinical syndrome characterized by altered level of consciousness or cognition. It can be caused by primary CNS conditions, or it can be secondary to systemic disease. To determine the etiology of acute encephalopathy, it is useful to consider the time course of symptoms, hyperacute, acute, or subacute. Acute encephalopathy is often reversible once the underlying etiology is determined and treated. An encephalopathic patient may present with acute confusional state, impaired perception, information processing, and memory, with or without psychomotor hyperactivity. Encephalopathy may be due to organ failure, electrolyte abnormalities, endocrine dysfunction, nutritional deficiency, infection, toxins, substance withdrawal, toxicity from medications, or primary central neurological causes such as seizures, CNS infections, subarachnoid hemorrhage, cerebrovascular processes, and any of the multiple causes of increased intracranial pressure, among others. The first step is to obtain a detailed history, including last known well time and whether symptom onset was hyperacute, seconds to minutes, acute, hours to days, or subacute, weeks to months. Causes for hyperacute and acute encephalopathy may include hypertensive encephalopathy, systemic infection, substance overdose or withdrawal, intracranial hemorrhage, or seizure. Ischemic strokes can also cause acute encephalopathy. Patients with infarcts affecting areas such as the bilateral paramedian region of the thalamus or brainstem can sometimes present with encephalopathy. Subacute encephalopathy is often due to toxic and metabolic derangements, nutritional deficiencies, psychiatric illness, or autoimmune neoplastic or paraneoplastic conditions. Because of the broad list of differentials, collect data on medical history, current or recently discontinued medications, dietary restrictions, and toxin exposures. A complete set of vitals and a comprehensive physical exam, including a neurological exam, is crucial. Driven by history and exam, consider ordering pertinent lab tests such as comprehensive chemistry and electrolytes, complete blood count, liver function tests, cardiac enzymes, urine toxicology, urinalysis, and blood cultures. Thyroid function, ammonia, thymine, and vitamin B12 levels may also be measured on a case-by-case -case basis. If a patient presents with fever and encephalopathy, infectious meningitis or encephalitis must be ruled out with lumbar puncture for CSF analysis. Patients with focal deficits should have neuroimaging in order to visualize structural abnormalities that could be contributing to the encephalopathic presentation and potentially provide intervention in a timely manner. A CT scan of the head without contrast is frequently an appropriate initial study. If subclinical seizure activity is part of the differential, EEG monitoring should be considered. Becoming familiar with the most common cause of encephalopathy based on time course of symptoms facilitates narrowing the differential diagnosis. The patient in our case presented with acute encephalopathy and had no focal neurological deficits. She also had a urinalysis, which revealed hazy urine with positive nitrites and 20 white blood cells per HPF, so she was started on appropriate antibiotics. After treatment for her urinary tract infection, her mental status improved back to baseline, and she was discharged from the hospital three days later with subsequent normal exam on follow-up with her primary care doctor. For more information on this and other neurologic conditions, please visit aan.com forward slash neurobytes.